Tell me about your district. Sure. Every district represented here has got very, very unique stories, and usually the people running who are from those districts have a very serious reason yep. they're running to represent. Tell me and about your locality. And the same is definitely true in my district. Um, it is cer certainly the most beautiful district, though this is arguable, uh, in Colorado. Um, it's also one of the most well-educated, uh, wealthy districts. It's a very suburban uh, sort of cross-section, mm -hmm. and it's pretty large, and it's, uh, it's defined by, um, politically, folks who are, are homeless. They, they really don't feel in either of the two parties that they're well represented. Okay. And that issue is brought to bear uh, most clearly to most folks that I chat with uh, around two big issues, which are sort of the ones that are defining for my campaign. Number one is uh, teacher pay or education, mm. and the other is transportation or roads. Um, it's fascinating how many folks can come together uh, at a barbecue or picnic and complain about both of those issues because they are so dissatisfied with the sort of lack of results that have been put forward by both parties year after year after year, which is why I think while the district is beautiful and suburban, what defines it is the frustration uh, that is evident from folks who have origins on one side and the other. Well, and you've also got a background in transportation. I do. Too. I do. So you know, you know the heartbeat of this issue. How yeah. has that helped? Well, yeah, it's helped a lot because I'm conversant in the big issues and, and really um, as a citizen of the district, I know for sure that you know people are frustrated by sitting in traffic, which is a big part of why that's a defining issue for them. I have a, I have a child, I know about education, right? These things are, are sort of front and center for me because of who I am and where I've been professionally, but also because I listen. And, and really the people in my district, um, as I say, have, have no shortage of complaints on those two big sort of function of government sorts of things that both parties have used, I think, quite effectively to get their bases angry and to raise money, but they've not taken that much more important step of governing and solving problems related to those core issues. So I've chosen those issues because th that's content on which both sides, in theory, have that common ground, and yet very little has gotten done on those two defining issues. Uh, it's a great opportunity for an independent to come yeah. in and really make some change. Well, it's educating your kids and getting them around, getting them to school using it. the infrastructure. You got it. Uh, what is the makeup primarily, or what has it been, mm -hmm. with regard to the Republicans and Democrats, sure. uh, the, the voter makeup? It's a very, historically, uh, if you look at voting records mm -hmm. and registration statistics, is what I think you're asking after, it leans very far right. So much so that that influences the game uh, in the district in a, in a very important and, I think, uh, negative way. The Republican is confident that he cannot lose. The Democrat is utterly confident. It's always that way, right? She cannot win. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's interesting. The, the result of that two, um, those two perceptions, misperceptions in my view, is that nobody's on the field. The Republican doesn't work hard, doesn't spend time Well, the top dog always public. feels like, oh, I can mail it well, in. Well, and, and the numbers are on his side, right? He has, uh, he's been four years in the state Senate, and he's going for his second term. Before that, he was in the House several times, and he's never had a competitive fight because the district leans mm -hmm. so far right. He wins by virtue of being R, not by virtue of solving problems, by being uh, somebody who's with the constituents on specific issues. His job is to do the party bidding, bidding and he's done a very good job at that. Mm -hmm. The Republican caucus stays in line. Hence the success. Or he takes them <laughs> to the woodshed. Um, right. The Democrats, similarly, uh, you know, they, they look at this race as a non-competitive race. They run, sometimes they run candidates, sometimes they don't. This time they have, have given this candidate zero support. So the folks in this district who lean to the left, who are not comfortable with you know, voting Republican, and there are lots of them, uh, they don't see they have a viable candidate in the Democratic contender. Tend and to be so, socially liberal, some of them fiscal conservatives, but yep. are there any you know, uh, socially and, and more fiscally, I want to say liberal, uh, that, is there a mix on the Democrat side? Because you say it, it leans so very far mm. Republican on the other side. Yeah, you know, it, it's actually an interesting uh, way to pose the question because in my view, um, most people would probably, left, right, and center, classify themselves as some degree of fiscally conservative and socially open or liberal. Some people take it a little further on the left. Okay, and, so and let's maintain a very, budget, very doggone few, it. Exactly. And, right, and, and that's, yeah. that's super interesting because I find that sort of general pronouncement mm -hmm. from folks who've had you know, 40 years history voting on the exactly. Democrat side and, and 30 years voting on the, on the right. Yeah. And so ultimately, that is the common ground. I consider myself fiscally conservative, socially liberal, and I can't look at a person in the state Senate who, who I could say is a model for those behaviors. Mm -hmm. What they do on the right, typically, and that's where my history is, they focus on the social issues with which I disagree. Being the moral beacon. Exactly, exactly. And, and yeah. that's out of touch with most voters. There are certainly some for whom those issues resonate and will right. continue to. But the broad swath of people, the, the folks who are 
eager to reject the party labels, the folks who recoil when they see a politician with a clipboard trying to grab a signature, mm -hmm. right? right. They, are, they are reticent to be in politics. Yeah. They are reticent to be labeled as Republican or Democrat. Mm -hmm. When they find out I'm independent, their, their whole body changes. It's like your their ticket to ride, demeanor. really, because it's the time in history exactly. for it. Tell exactly. me about your campaign so far. How's everything going? Strategically, I think it's been uh, it's been fun to sort of think about where the investments uh, that have you know, done a fairly good job of raising money, thanks to my supporters. Um, and I look forward to a very successful sort of outcome because I think ultimately you you win or, or lose on the basis of where you choose to spend your time and money and the, and the volunteer hours that are contributed by well, folks Also, tell who us care. about your, uh, tell us about the, the um, system of voting mm. and how that's been overcome. Sure. So I interestingly, uh, there are some common misperceptions relative to that in Colorado. Uh, first of all, folks ask the common question, if you're an independent, what are you going to do in office? Who are you going to caucus with? And folks don't know this. I didn't know it myself until I got involved in the process. Might not have gotten involved had I not learned this important fact. You don't have to caucus with anybody in Colorado. The Colorado Constitution guarantees every legislator what caucus? five bills. <laughs> Right? Yeah. And three committees. So I will have committee assignments. They can't not give me those by law. And I will have I will have the ability to legislate. Cool. Now whether or not people vote on my bills, that'll that'll come down to me if I can right. persuade uh, colleagues to participate. But that's another reason I'm excited, because the Senate in Colorado is currently seventeen uh, or eighteen Republicans. It was seventeen Democrats and one of the Democrats okay. uh, became an independent. I could likely win and and sit between seventeen on one side and seventeen on the other. They would literally have to work with me to get anything done, and that's a powerful, you know, sort of tool um, that I think the voters that are supporting me are excited about too, because they see this not as a wasted vote; mm -hmm. they see this as a transformational vote, right? They see this as an opportunity to affect change in a system right. with which they are disgusted and have frustrations about, and have felt that way for a long time. Sure, it's getting worse. The current climate is is certainly extreme, but people have but felt this way time. for a long right. time, right? There are loads of Republicans who've been right. sort of uncomfortable in that party with with all that it means for a long time. It's it's reached a fever pitch, right. and that's why they're really intrigued and supportive. Strike while the but iron's hot, right? Exactly. Thank you so much for your time, Steve Peterson, Colorado Senate District 30 Independent Candidate. Thank you. Thank you.